Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see how to do anomaly detection using autoencoder. So first let's see what are autoencoders. Autoencoders are a type of neural network which are designed to reconstruct the input. So our input will be if our input is x output will be x hat which should be similar. And for the fault detection case, the autoencoder will be trained just on the fault free data. And uh, we hope that in the fault, uh, faulty case, when there is a fault present in the uh, data, this reconstruction, the model will not be able to reconstruct well. So we'll have a higher reconstruction error. So we know now what is the autoencoder, a basic idea at least. So reconstruction loss is just the mean squared error between the input and the output given by the neural network. If the autoencoder is properly trained, this mean squared error would be very less. All right. But when the input is anomalous, like the input does not belong to our training data, then the neural network should not be able to reconstruct it properly because it is only trained on the normal case. So then the reconstruction error will be very high. And as this is very high compared to the normal case, we can detect it by using normal thresholding methods. We'll put a threshold for uh, normal condition reconstruction error. And then if the reconstructed error of a new, new sample goes beyond that, we we'll say, okay, this belongs to anomaly condition. Now I hope you got a brief introduction of how we are going to use autoencoder for anomaly detection. Now we are going to see the code implementation. The code imp implementation is very similar to the last video. First we'll import the necessary libraries, then the necessary data sets. I'm going to concatenate both the fault free and the faulty data set for the ease of accessibility. Then I'm going to scale the data set. From SQLN I'm using the standard scaler. I'm creating an instance of the standard scalar object. Then for the, and remind that I'm scaling using just the fault free case. So DF fault number equal to zero only refers to the fault free case. From there, I'm obtaining all the sensor variable. ILOC uh, refers to indexing method in pandas where I'm creating, I'm ob obtaining all the rows and the columns from third column onwards. That means this is my third column onwards. All the sensor measurements. I save that in a variable called fault free and then the created instance of standard scalar I'm using to fit transform the fault free condition, which I'll save in a new variable called fault free scaled. The fault free scaled has a shape of uh, 250,000 samples and 52 is the number of measurements, a number of feature. Then I want to do a standard, uh, I, then I want to do a training and test split, split before I start training my neural, uh, neural network so that I can uh, do a cross validation. Okay, so all right. So I'm first I'm create in, uh, I'm uh, importing the train test split from SQLM and in the train test split it takes both X and Y but for me both are same. So I'm putting fault free scaled, fault free scaled two times. I'm taking test size to be 20% and I'm creating a random state. So you, maybe you can reproduce this as well. All right. Uh, my X train has a shape of uh, 200,000 data and X test X test has a sample of 50,000 data. Next comes the part of constructing the neural network. For that, I'm using Keras and TensorFlow. I'm, I'm obtaining first the layer, input layer and dense. This, this is the only two layer I need. I'm obtaining the model and early stopping to avoid overfitting. Xtrain.shape1 refers to all the uh, dimension of the feature. In this case, 52 sensor measurement. Then one a hidden layer with 32 neurons, then another hidden layer with 32 neurons, and finally the output layer. The one thing to note here is uh, in the output layer, the activation function is linear. Autoencoder, 
then I'm creating the auto encoder model by getting the model object from the Keras uh, library. My input is input layer, this one, and my output is the decoder, which is this one. So this entire part will be my neural network. Then I'm compiling it using Adam optimizer and my loss will be mean squared error. If I plot the summary, see that 52 neuron, 32, 32, and in the end 52. Now comes the training of neural network. First, I'm creating a all early stopping instance where I'm monitoring the validation loss. I'm monitoring for 10 epochs. If in 10 epochs or 10 iterations, the validation loss does not decrease, I'm stopping my training. Otherwise, it will overfit on the uh, training data. Then I'm fitting my autoencoder model where my x, the input is x string, the output is also x string. I'm taking only the 50th sample. Basically, this is a downsampling task. I'm downsampling it by 50 times because in itself is a big, very big data set and takes a lot of time to train. And I do not have a GPU so that I can accelerate it. I'm uh, running it for 300 epochs, but uh, probably before this, uh, the early stopping will uh, come and it will stop. Batch size is 120. I'm shuffling the data set after each iteration. And for the validation data, I'm taking X test and X test. This is also time down sampled 50 times and callbacks, early stopping callback. Then this is just to plot the learning. After I run this uh, code, and it ran for I think 2000 to 206 iteration. After that, the validation loss stopped to decrease for 10 epochs and then it stopped the uh, training. You can see that our loss decreased uh, very monotonically and it's very good. Now let's visualize the reconstructed data. So let's not forget what, the, what was our main goal is. Our main goal is to reconstruct the input as accurately as possible for the fault free case. So we are going to visualize that how our model is able to reconstruct. How good is it now after training? So uh, I'm obtaining the fault free case and uh, I'm obtaining some random simulation number between one to 500. I'm putting that in a temp variable. Then I'm scaling the temp variable and then I'm using the temp SC, which is the scaled variable to predict using the auto encoder model which will be temperate. Now I'll plot between this temp SC and temperate for all the feature, all the 52 feature. So in the plotting, we can see that the blue one is the actual and the reconstructed is the output of the neural network. You can see it almost accurately predicting the input. Here also, here also is good, good. Yeah, most of the case, you can say that it's uh, it's doing a good job of tracing the input. In the next step, I'll create a function called recon loss, which will give me the reconstructed the reconstruction error after the prediction from the neural network. So NN will be the trained autoencoder model, and X is the any input that I want to calculate with reconstruction loss for. So first, using the NN, I'll predict on X which will be x spread and then I'm just uh, doing the mean squared error between x spread and x. It will make reconstruction loss. And I'm going to monitor this reconstruction loss. If it is higher than a threshold, then I will flag it as an anomaly. But first, first uh, we need to find what is the threshold of the neural network and we need to see how the distribution of uh, fault-free reconstruction loss looks like. For that, I'm again uh, doing, I'm uh, obtaining the fault free case. I'm doing the transform of that and I'm putting that in a fault x fault free variable. Then using this function x recon loss, the recon loss, I'm, I'm first calling the autoencoder model, the trained autoencoder model, and I'm, I want to calculate the reconstruction loss for this variable, the x fault free. Do not get intimidated by this big function, it's just uh, I, I'm calling for. I'm sampling randomly 5,000 sa randomly 5,000 sample because to do for all the faults uh, for all the data is a little computationally expensive. That's it. And you see the uh, histogram 
of this uh, reconstruction loss, we can see that its mean is about 0 0.1 and it has some standard deviation. Now let's see how the faulty data reconstruction looks. For that, I'm iterating through all the fault scenarios from 1 to 20. And in temp faulty, I'm just uh, capturing the faulty data. This df sample greater than 20 is written because the fault were introduced after the 20th sample. And uh, f num just refers to the um, f num refers to the number of fault. After that, I'm scaling the temp faulty, this one. And then I'm obtaining the reconstruction loss using the trained autoencoder and x40 for 5000 random samples. So using this, we can see that yeah, for fault number one, this little blue one is our uh, fault free scenario. And this one is our faulty scenario for fault case also fault for fault two also we can see but we cannot detect fault three because fault free distribution and faulty distribution are lying on top of each other. So we cannot distinguish this. For fault four, it's clearly distinguishable. But our threshold is here and everything right to, to its right will be our faulty case. Yeah, similarly, you can examine for all the faults. I'll put the uh, Jupyter notebook in GitHub. Then comes real, uh, then I'll calculate the threshold. For that, I'm obtaining the mean of the fault-free reconstruction loss. This is fault-free reconstruction loss is the this array which contains the reconstruction loss for the entire uh, data set of the fault-free set, fault-free condition, standard deviation. And threshold will be mu plus 3 standard deviation. For this case, I'm getting 0 0.216. Now, let's see. Now, I'll just put this threshold and I'll see how is it good to do fault detection in real time. For that, I'm obtaining some fault. Uh, I'm obtaining for different kind of fault scenarios. And just for simulation run one, so that I can see how it performs in this threshold, when this threshold is passing, when it's not passing, transforming the data to X faulty variable, and then doing the obtaining the reconstruction loss for this single run. So for fault number zero, we can see that this is our threshold. The green line refers to after which the fault was introduced, but for fault zero, there was no fault was introduced. You can see that the mean square error, the blue one, stays be below, beneath the threshold. So it's good for us. For fault number one, this is our threshold. And we see that as soon as the fault was introduced, it surpasses the threshold. And we can detect this fault. Same for fault number two, but for fault number three, it stays within the threshold for entire time. Yeah, and you can see yourself for different type of fault, but most of the time it's, it's doing a good job. So now I want to evaluate the F1 score for each fault condition. For that, I'm come this I'm obtaining the I'm creating this function combined result. The goal is just to convert this entire result into a binary function. So what does that mean? We know the threshold. And we know the variable, uh, we know the mean squared error. If the mean squared error is greater than the threshold, then we'll say it's one, that means faulty condition, otherwise zero. This function is doing that. If x is greater than threshold than one, then I'm converting the Boolean value to a float value, that's it. Because using this zero one array, I can, uh, can, I can obtain the F1 score easily. F1 score and accuracy both, all right. So in this, this function is very similar to the last video. If you haven't seen it, I'll recommend you check that out. The first I'm obtaining the faulty case, uh, transforming, obtaining the uh, reconstruction loss. Then I'm using this combined result function where my input is the reconstruction loss and the threshold which I already obtained before to obtain y pred, which is a Boolean matrix of zero and one. Zero for fault free case and one for the faulty case. And this is this this function will create the ground truth. F when f num is zero, that means the fault free case, all the values will be zero. But for except for zero, that means any fault is introduced. Uh, I'll put uh, it will I'll populate with one. But uh, before twentieth sample, it was zero. That means the fault was introduced after twentieth sample. So before that, it was normal condition. So from 
scale learn matrices i'll import the f1 score accuracy score and i'll just compute them and here we can see for various fault for fault free keys this is the confusion matrix you can see that most of them belong to the truth ground truth is zero and the model prediction is also zero which is very good but there are just three misclassification or false alarm that's why it's penalizing it very high in f1 score we can see that it's pretty low just for three misclassification for fault uh, for F f1 score for fault number one 0 0.97 very good accuracy is also almost uh, similar 99 percent and same goes for various fault and if i combine this fault i take the mean of all this fault then i obtain a single matrix for this method so for the f1 score i obtain 0 0.627 and for the uh, accuracy score i obtain 0 0.724 mind you that i am excluding the fault 3 and fault 9 because they are very close to the uh, normal health condition and it's very difficult to detect them so that was it for the video in the next video we'll see how we can use ensembled method to do the same fault detection uh, fault detection without using any labeled data so till then see you